Yeah, Lee, uh, how was it to receive the news uh, you were getting traded to Atlanta? Uh, you know, after you all went to the championship game last year in Buffalo and um, so forth. Yeah. Uh, you, okay. Yeah. Okay. Can hear you. You know, man, it was awesome. Um, it, it's a blessing to have a job in this league in general, and I know that's a cliche answer, but but it's the truth, man. Uh, I, I love my time in Buffalo. I've been there twice. It's a big part of mine and my family's life. My kids got to enjoy Buffalo when they were babies. Now they get to enjoy Buffalo again as they were older. But um, but I'm a, I'm a Southern boy, and and we got our, our family Southern. So we did our California stint. We've done our New York stint, and um, you know my children are are much more worldly than I was at their age, to say the least, which has been awesome. But uh, but we're ready to we're ready to get home. Um, you know, this is the end of my career here, and, and to be three hours from our front door and three hours from our family and <clears throat> in an area that's a little more familiar for, I'm going to have two kids in middle school, so uh, so they're excited. Um, they, uh, they, they, they've they been giving me the, Daddy, how much longer are you going to play football talk for the last couple of years here? So um, when I told them we get to get in the car and, and drive three hours down the road for a, for a team that that, uh, that their dad believes in and... Uh, and with, with, I say the Arthurs, right? Like, you know, uh, Mr. Mr. Blank, the big boss man, and then, and then Arthur Smith. Uh, you know, at this point in my career, I would have, I would have shut it down and, and, uh, and started coaching at the local high school before I would have joined another team I didn't believe in. And that, that's just the truth. I feel super blessed to be in that situation. Um, I'm definitely not a superstar or a premier player, but I, but I have played long enough and, and been blessed enough to – to not have to, you know, accept a trade to a place I didn't want to be. Let's put it that way. Um, so I'm fired up. Everybody I've called from the Patrick DeMarcos to the Bruce Irvins to, you know, my dinner with Matt Ryan last week. They just rave about the organization. They rave about the owner from the top down. And I've been around Arthur Smith for a long time. And I know the kind of man he is, the husband he is, the father he is. And, uh, and I'm fired up. Yes, yeah, sure. We went to the ASC championship game last year, and that was awesome. And uh, those guys are still my – hell, my teammates in Buffalo are acting like I died, for crying out loud, not like I got traded. So, um, <laughs> you know, those guys will be fine up there without me. Uh, they'll, they'll be just fine, especially with that quarterback they have and the leadership they have. So, I'll miss those guys, but I'm fired up to come to Atlanta. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Hi, Lee. It's very nice to meet you. Um yes. I wanted to pop off of what you were just kind of saying about believing in, believing in this team and specifically about believing in Arthur Smith. I know you talked about him being a good family man, just a good man in general, but what is it about him that makes you believe in him and what he's going to be doing here in Atlanta? Well, <clears throat> number, number one, look, for me personally, you know, Matt Ryan has a big part of this too. Uh, the last thing you want to do as a veteran player is is, is go join a rebuild or, or a team with a young quarterback that you got to nurse and 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 uh, and deal with his growing pains. So um, so the fact that Matt Ryan's there is huge for me as well. But you know you 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 look at Arthur and when I first came, he's been in Tennessee pretty much my whole career. So we've kind of brushed shoulders and chatted and talked and you know I've tried to get with him in free agency over the years. It just never really worked out. Um, but it's one of those deals where I've called around, I've done my homework with, with a lot of players he's coached from positionally to coordinator. And, uh, and, and obviously he's never been a head coach before, but neither was Bill Belichick until he became a head coach. So I know that, that every player I've called says, listen, man, this dude's going to hold you accountable. He, he's, he's not about the BS, but, but he's a real dude. And he, he's, he gets it. He, he remembers the days of when he was a position coach and what that was like. He's going to remember when he was a coordinator. He, he's going to put good men around him. And he's about grit and grind, which from what I've understood is that's, that's Arthur Blank's big thing too. Like we're going to work here, but we're also going to love each other and have a good time while we're doing it. So uh, my big thing with Art is, you know, listen, when, when you hold, there, there's a very fine line in this business of, being tough and demanding work, but still, but still the, the players loving you, right? Like, you know, Bill Belichick's won a lot of championships, but it, it's not the brightest building to walk into. Like one thing I know is, is Bill kind of always says this ain't for everybody. And trust me, as a veteran player, uh, I wouldn't have accepted that trade, right? All right. So 
I like to go into work and grind and work my butt off, but, but be with a bunch of good dudes who want to have fun winning together, you know? So um, at the end of the day, I know that when all these players go to Twitter, when Arthur got that head job, just congratulating him and, and loving on him, you know, for a coach that works guys as hard as he does and a coach that has a standard as high as he has and a coach that demands the most out of players to still have his players love him and jump on the table when he gets a head job somewhere else is special. There's just not that many. And listen, I have the utmost respect for Bill Belichick. Don't get me wrong. Like that, that dude is, is, is special, special, special. Hell, he drafted me. But but I'm at the point in my career to where to where I got to go home in a good mood to my beautiful family. And, yeah, we're going to work, and, yeah, we're going to be held accountable. But at the end of the day, winning's fun. Football's supposed to be fun. And we got a man leading the charge that, that wants to, to get the culture back the way it's supposed to be and, uh, and, and take advantage of, of the time Matt Ryan has left, whether it's five years, six years, seven years, however long it is, and, and try to bring a championship to Atlanta. But at the same time, uh, have, have a little have a little fun while we're doing it. So uh, so it just everybody, like I said, everybody raved about the Arthurs. It's about the Arthurs for me, and the location is a home run for my family. Don't get me wrong. That that's probably one of the biggest things. But but just the the fact that all those guys went to Twitter, all the guys love me. Ryan Fitzpatrick called me immediately when I got traded and is like, "That's the best. You're gonna love Art. You know he's he's one of a kind, et cetera, et cetera." So. So uh, just brushing shoulders with him over the years and then the, the way all these guys rave about him. But it's not a country club. I wasn't interested in that either because it's hard to win when it's a country club. We're going to work, but, but we're going we're gonna to be led by a good dude who, you know, uh, likes, to, likes to have fun when, when it's not football time. So that's, that's the deal. Nice. And one more question for me, uh, not about football, but uh, I wanted to ask about your involvement with the Punt Foundation and how – how did you get involved with them to begin with? And what, what was that time and experience like? And uh, what did you get out of that? Uh, you know, I was, I was a young player uh, in Buffalo, my first stint. And our, our punter, Brian Mormon, who played forever, was the one that started the Punt Foundation. Uh, and we were just in our locker one day. And he said, hey, man, our lockers were right beside each other. And uh, he said, hey, man, why don't you come to the hospital with me this week? And I kind of said, you know, what for? But, yeah, I mean, I'll come. What's it for? He said, it's kids with pediatric cancer. And of course, I had three children, me and my pretty bride, Alicia, by the time I was a rookie. So I was like, yeah, man, are you kidding me? I'm all in. Just tell me when to be there. I'll be there on Tuesday on our off day. And then that kind of became a every Tuesday deal. And and, uh, and I tried to stay involved as much as I could when I was in Oakland. And then obviously me coming back, the Punt Foundation was, was kind of the cherry on top for me going back to Buffalo for my second stint. And Listen, my, my big thing has always been kids and the military. Uh, I couldn't imagine watching my kids suffer, and I sure wouldn't be living in this great country if it wasn't for guys that took bullets in their dang chests. So anybody on those two fronts, they have my support and my love, period, end of story, and that's the way it'll always be as long as God blesses me and I'm on planet Earth. So just watching these kids suffer, man, and uh, – and watching their families have to it's it's the kids the kids get showered like superstars right they get to meet justin bieber and josh allen and matt ryan and you know they get little carnivals coming in it's it's the parents that are watching their children die that there's just no way to describe it and and there's nothing worse so if if god blessing me and give me a little small platform here uh can can bring a smile to these kids faces then i'm all in and it was just intoxicating for me it was something that i can never get away from because it's truly what life's all about and and you know god sure didn't give me this big ugly body to not be able to use it to to brighten people's lives especially people suffering watching their babies being sick <clears throat> all right michael rothstein from espn Hey, Lee, how you doing? Uh, I, I want to go back to the trade for a second. Did you anticipate that you were going to get moved somewhere, or did any of this kind of take you by surprise? Or were they telling you, hey, if we can't move you, we're going to release you? Like, what was that machination like? Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, I have a, I have an utmost respect for Brandon Bean and what he's done up in Buffalo. Uh, I consider Brandon a friend. You know, me and Sean McDermott have a great relationship. And, uh, and, you know, me and Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator, have a great relationship. So, you know, as a, as a veteran player with, with a teenage son running around, you have more in common with the coaches sometimes than you do your 22-year-old teammate out here running the streets. 
Now, I'm always teammate first, and every coach I have better know that, but but sometimes I, I build relationships with the coaches. It just is what it is with the management. or You know, it's all a brotherhood inside these buildings. Even though, you know, these guys can fire me at any point, it's, it's still we're all in this thing together if you want to have a successful organization. And me and Brandon were close. And I just kind of said, man, like, you know, I'm, our offense has moved to, to the four wide world. And, you know, Stefan Diggs and Cole Beasley are a lot better at football than Lee Smith. So I understand that with the COVID cap and, and everything kind of coming down the horn here, I had a bonus due. I don't know if it was this week or last week, but I just kind of said, you know, if you're going to move me, you know, there's there's not many teams I'm willing to, you know, accept, you know, and those that and not many was was a real low number. So uh, so, um, you know, he obviously reached out to, to Arthur and Terry and it just all kind of the good Lord put his hands on it and. Uh, it wasn't about the money to me at this point. Don't get me wrong. I have zero interest in playing football for free, but, but it wasn't about the money. It was about the situation for my family, especially with a, with a great organization full of great men that, uh, that love football and want to win, but also, uh, want, want, want to, to have a good time doing it. So, uh, so when, when Brandon moved me, was I surprised? No, because, uh, we had kind of had very respectful, honest conversations over the last couple months and I was considering retiring too. So, um, so it was one of those deals where like, you know, if the stars align and the good Lord wants me to keep playing football and I can do it somewhere I believe in, then I still love ball. I still love competing. And I, I you know, I, I think I can still play a little bit. So, um, so that was my deal. Was I surprised? No. Did I know for sure it was going to be the Atlanta Falcons? No, but, uh, but Brandon, let's just put it this way. Brandon, knew that, uh, there was only a few GMs he could call to make something happen. <laughs> And, and I kind of follow on that a little bit. You've mentioned your family a few times, and you've mentioned being three hours away from home a few times. Some players, once their kids get older, leave everybody at home and just kind of do the season thing there and then go right back home. Is your whole family going to come with you because you're so close, or are you all maybe going to separate in season because it's not Buffalo to Tennessee type situation? You know, that that was kind of up in the air for me. My family's always been with me, so they've always done school in Buffalo or Oakland, and then they do school in Tennessee in the spring, um, and that's just the way we've done it. That's always been their normal. Uh, I always wanted Tennessee to be the, the, the most homey and the most normal for them, so when I do walk away from this game one day, uh, you know, I always kind of figured they'd run me out of it. Looks like I'm going to be blessed enough to walk away on my own terms now, but, um, but we so I kind of mentioned that to my wife and she gave me the you've lost your damn mind look we're coming so uh and and i agreed with her i'm not i would not be the best version of myself without them i would not be the best teammate i'd not be the best leader i would not be the best anything um without my family and it sounded good on paper to try to you know let my kids finally start their their full-time life in tennessee but uh but we've decided to to move as a family because uh that you know as my wife my wife's been my best friend for um, and she knows better than anybody that I probably wouldn't be the best version of myself without them. So we're all fired up to, to come to Atlanta. And uh, I don't know how many more times we'll be moving after this season. Let's just put it that way. But uh, I'm fired up to be a Falcon this year and then help Arthur and, and Matt and all the guys get, get it back going. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lee. Cole Newberry. Hey, Lee. How you doing? Yeah. Uh, Hey, uh, just a couple things for me. One, just kind of how do you envision your role uh, with this team? You mentioned, you know, getting a chance to play with Matt Ryan. So what do you sort of envision how they'll use you here this season? And um, also, uh, you mentioned you didn't weren't interested in going to a rebuilding team, but that sort of appears to be what the Falcons are right now. They have obviously some, some great veterans, but, uh, you know, after some losing seasons, appear to be kind of turning the roster over a little bit. Uh, can you speak to, to that as well? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I guess, you know, I guess the rebuilding thing for me starts at the quarterback. Uh, I've been doing this long enough to know that w without a quarterback, it's it's going to be it's going to be a long year. So, so I guess my thing is, you know, if I can walk into a locker room with with. Uh, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, it don't really matter who else you put around them. If you do things the right way, you can probably screw on offense. So, um, so obviously it's not a two man show. We all got to be in this thing together. And, uh, but, but rebuilding around elite potential, you know, hall of fame talent that have decades of experience in this league that have experience playing the Super Bowls, 
you know, that that's a little different of a rebuild, so to speak. And, uh, and I, and I think, you know, Arthur understands that obviously he's got to get this thing going back in the right direction. And the COVID salary cap is a nightmare. And, and, uh, and Arthur has to have this team built his way and, and that's awesome. But, um, but I, I don't, I just, I don't look at it as a, as a no hope rebuild. That's just not the way I look at it. Not with the talent on this roster and the success they've had with so many of the same guys that are still on this roster. Uh, the, you know, the, the elite starters they have in certain positions. So, so that's my deal, you know? Um, but, but at the same time, I believe in Arthur Smith. I respect him. Uh, you know, I look up to him and what he's accomplished in this business. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to, uh, to come down and, and just give everything I have to, to, my young teammates, especially Matt and Arthur. And then as far as my role is concerned, you know, this is my 10th season and, and I have what 50 or 60 catches in my whole career. So something tells me my, my role will probably be the same thing. It's always been, uh, you know, I'll put my hand in the dirt right beside the tackle and get in a phone booth fight. That's kind of my deal. So, uh, you know, if, if they want to, you know, there's a couple of times that the bills lined me up out of receiver this year and I got, I got pretty candid when I came off the field. I ain't real excited about being out there where the athletic guys hang out. So, um, you know, I'll do whatever the Arthur asked me to do. I'll do whatever the coordinator asked me to do and whatever Matt needs me to do. I'm a big believer in the quarterback led team. So, so listen, whatever these guys need me to do to help this football team win and help get this thing going back, you know, down the tracks like they want, I'm all in, but something tells me I'm going to have my hand in the dirt and, uh, and play in the Y like I have for the last decade in this business. And, uh, and quite honestly, that's, that's the way I like it. I'd much rather be wrestling in a phone booth with somebody my size than, you know, having little 200 pound submarine missiles diving in my kneecaps all damn day long. So, uh, I'm, I'm all about what I've done forever. I just want to grab my lunch pail and come to work and, and whoever has the ball in their hands, I want to make sure my guy's not the one that puts them on the ground. So that's, that's kind of my deal. Allison. Kind of with all that said, your experience for, you know, the Titans, especially they've only got a couple years of experience. How do you think you can kind of bring your leadership and kind of help mentor some of the, the younger guys on this team? Well, you know, this is a young man's game. Uh, the NFL is, is not for long for a reason. Right. Uh, and, and that's why I, I just feel so blessed and so humbled. So I have a lot of experience with younger guys because, this is a young man's league. There's, you know, four or 500 rookies in the league every year out of 2000 of us. And that's never going to change. Uh, so I, I love pouring into young players. You know, I do. It's, it's something that brings me joy. It's something that, you know, uh, I take extreme pride in and I'm not trying to be their dad or trying to tell them how to do things. They're grown men, you know? Uh, but at the same time, I, I do have the experience. I have been doing this a long time. And I, there are certain little things that just, you know, Justin Peel is, is, a, is a little bit of the exception. You know, he played for a long, long time in this league and tied in. But but it always resonates more and clicks more when it's coming from a teammate. And, and if anybody understands that, Justin will. So so I, I'm super excited. Like it's, it's just the perfect storm, man. Having a tight end coach that played forever. You know, I've had a lot of great tight end coaches throughout my career. So I've been super blessed. But um, but being in a room with a coach that played at a high level for a long time, and and me and him with the with the wealth of knowledge and experience that we've had, we've already, we've already screwed it all up. So why in the hell screw it up yourself instead of just asking me, hey man, how do I how do I not screw this up? So um, so I, I would i more I can't wait to help these guys. I want them to go have eleven year football careers just like I have, and uh, and be able to take care of their families and provide a life that that's really really special. So. And listen, I'm not try- like I said, I'm not trying to take any balls out of their hands. I can promise you. I'm trying to do all the dirty work so they can go catch all the damn balls and be on the newspaper clippings. So hopefully I can be somebody that's a resource for them and, and helps them. And, uh, and if they get one little piece of knowledge from me, that'd be great. I mean, the first year I signed back in Buffalo, we had two rookie tight ends. So, you know, I got to kind of uh, love on them. And, and they, they, these guys here in Atlanta are a little bit older, so it's not, not quite the same as, as dealing with puppies like I was dealing with in, in uh, Buffalo. But but having your guys, if there's something little I can give them or, or something that they can learn from me, then that's freaking awesome because I had a lot of great vets when I was younger, and I can't stand veterans that try not to let the young guys grow because that's not what life's about and that's not what this league should be about. And, 
and hell, nobody wants to do what I. Nobody wants to go in there and fight like I do anyway to tie it in anymore. So, um, so I get. I'll go do all the dirty work for them. They can go get all the glory and fame and and do all the the stuff that they hope we like to do. And and then when we're in there together, and it's time to to grind. And you know they can they can come grind with me. And then when it's when it's third down, I'll go over there and grab some pom poms and cheer for them. <clears throat> You also mentioned, too, um, that you had dinner with Matt Ryan already. So can you talk about kind of how that went down and what, you know, what that was like? What's the spread look like? I mean, was that your first time getting to really sit down with him? Yeah, you know, me and my wife are so close. We just drove up. I mean, we got to got to Buckhead in less than three hours from our front door in Knoxville. And um, and it was after the trade had kind of went through and been approved. Uh so just had, had a little dinner, you know, I just kind of wanted to, it's COVID, it's who knows what the off season is going to look like, you know, it's just one of those deals where like, you know, and obviously he he had a lot of great things to say about the offensive side of the ball and, and everything they've had going on, you know, obviously they didn't win enough games, that's why there's new hires and, you know, you know it's a production-based business, so, so losing costs a lot of people their jobs and that sucks because you love these guys and you build brotherhoods unlike any other business in the world. So, you know, nobody, nobody wants to watch the buddies get fired or, or released or anything like that. So, so just kind of asking him what he needed from me, you know, he, you know, he, he shows up in a fancy ass cashmere sweater and a, you know, gold Rolex. So he's a little different breed than me to say the least, but, um, but he's a super awesome guy. I've never been around him, but just getting to hang out with him, man, and see how excited he was just about life. I mean, he, I looked over at my wife a couple of times and we both just laughed because he's fired up about life man and that's cool to me just being around a good dude but then when it's time to talk ball his whole energy just changes it's like all right now we're talking about work and that's that's the arthur smith deal is like listen when it's football time it's football time boys and that's our damn job excuse my language so let's grind and let's win football games so it just all worked i was fired up about it i've known how much success he's had i mean i can i can go to the internet and look up how many times he's thrown touchdown passes like the player he is was was already there, but getting to meet the person was awesome, and it was kind of the uh, kind of the cherry on top of, of this whole deal for me was was getting to spend a little time with him and just asking him what he needed from me, man. Like, what do you want from me? Um, I've been the veteran leader for a long time. It's it, it's going to be sure nice to to let him go deal with all of it. Just what do you what do you need from me to to help this to help this thing go? 